number 47, live from the Portugal base camp, which basically means a van on a piece of land. Um, but yeah, so this monthly news is the last one of the year. So what we usually do then is a recap. So let's rewind one year uh, back when we released Pressure Plastic version four in January. And it took us one and a half year to develop uh, with a lot of people so putting on the line is always quite exciting you don't really know what's going to happen but it also takes a while for the community to read the information to understand it to replicate it so throughout the whole year we've actually been uh, yeah observing what happens from that super cool seeing sheet presses being built shredders being built and really growing a stronger community of plastic recyclers and for fresh plastic itself we had a lot of events and collaborations around the world uh, to do um, but they all got cancelled due to Corona, which was kind of a shame. Um, but actually Corona this year wasn't, I would say, the heavy thing on us. It was more that they found Chrome 6 in our workspace, which meant we had to leave the building in one month. Um, but yeah, we didn't have a plan B. We had to move out all of our stuff or dispose it somewhere or sell it. Uh, so that was quite a big undertaking. And we brought all the precious plastic stuff to France where Jan's dad had a nice shed where we could continue pressure plastic. So all the machines and tools went there. And this is actually quite uh, nice for us that pressure plastic could continue development because how it happened before is we make a version, we're super tired, uh, we take a break or do something else and don't really develop pressure plastic. And then at some point we make a new version. Um, but now we really have a team behind pressure plastic that wants to continue development on a daily basis Which I think is super good for pressure plastic to have. But yeah, Kat will talk more about this later And all the other stuff that was still in the workspace like machinery and tools uh, We put in two shipping containers to bring to project camp and one shipping container is uh, Converted into a workspace with all the tools and materials and the other one our town center Which has basic utilities like kitchen shower boiler and a washing machine so both are ready to be shipped to Portugal and should actually arrive here anytime soon. Yeah, because this year we also finally bought our piece of land. Took a few years of searching and figuring out, but we finally got it here in Portugal. I'm on it right now. Uh, not much happened this year on it, uh, except getting the land. But it feels like it's just getting started. Uh, so very exciting for next year. And right at the end of the year, we killed Dave Huckins. So this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Yeah, weird, I know. But happy it's done. Uh, so it converted into one army. Hello, one army. Um, but Mattia will talk more about this. Thanks, Dave. Mattia here, also from uh, rainy Portugal. But I'm actually in Porto because, you know, the luxury of a shower. <laughs> So a major undertaking this year was to bring to life One Army. And One Army is kind of a big deal for us. It's a project that we're most probably going to be working on for the rest of our lives. And basically what it is, is the foundations behind all the projects that we're working on. From Precious Plastic to Project Camp, Story Hopper, a new secret fashion project coming up in 2021. And what we're really trying to do with One Army is to create a big global group of people that are willing to invest their time and energies into projects that are tackling global problems. And we're really trying to create this one global army ready to serve and protect planet Earth. So one army has already been in the making for a few years now. It all started uh, over two and a half years ago when we were all here in Portugal together with Dave, Kat and Ben and we really set the main core idea of the project as well as the name. Then, during uh, Precious Plastic version 4, we began to uh, research and look into what uh, the One Army logo and identity could look like. And big up Nico there for the amazing work that is being done in that. And eventually we landed on the North Star as a symbol for One Army. And a massive shout out goes to our patrons that they've been helping us all throughout the process from uh, helping with some inspiration, providing very valuable feedback, all the way down to voting the final logo. And simultaneously, we've also been working on the website, which is uh, now online at onearmy.earth. And that's really a place where all the news from the different projects comes together. Uh, we just recently released uh, an article about the 100,000 uh, downloads of the Precious Plastic Download Kit, as well as the ear review for One Army. 
So make sure to go and check it out. And with the launch of One Army, we've also redesigned our Patreon page to really fit the growing needs of our global army. And we now release the $1 tier to really enable every single one out there to, to join One Army, to support the work that we do to tackle global problems. And this video will be seen by what, 10, 15,000 people? And just try to imagine what One Army could do with $15,000. On top of these lower end tiers, we also have higher tiers that would grant you amazing rewards, such as stickers, badges, less, less yeah, sick badges, but also live streams and one-to-one -one calls with the core team. So make sure to go and have a look. And if you believe that our work is valuable to you or to anyone out there, make sure to support the work that we do at One Army. All right, that's it with one army. Now over to Kat for the precious plastic recap. Bye. Hello everyone, um, Kat here. And yeah, I'll talk a little bit about the year recap from the precious plastic side. Um, starting with the launch in January of version four. And this has been nearly one year ago now. So it's a very good time to look at some numbers. So we got 100,000 downloads of the download kit which contains all the information um, and blueprints and files you need to start a recycling project. We have 7,000 users on the very new community platform and 500 pins on the new map, of which 300 are active recycling workspaces, around 40 collection points, around 80 machine shops and 80 community points. We also throughout the year had around 120 events being created and on Discord we grew to an, an army of 10,000 people exchanging and helping and asking and answering each other um, and really helping each other succeed in their projects. And maybe the most exciting and useful number is that we have 48 new community how-tos on the community platform where we created this how-to tool to really centralize all documentation and tutorials around plastic recycling so that this can become the place to go for the community to learn um, from others and get inspired and share back what they learned. And it's really cool to see that the, the how-tos which have been created range from collection systems and product and mold making, but also how to give a recycling workshop and how to modify and upgrade um, the machines. So it's already becoming a place full of new ideas and know-how, which is adding to our academy and the videos we share. And it just gives these, this ability for the community to really build upon other um, experiences and knowledge and really work together um, to, to come up with better solutions together. So, so much about version 4 and the numbers and effects it had. And sticking to the numbers topic, we also created our first impact survey in March. So right at the right time when Corona um, had the first big outbreak. So maybe not the best time to get people's attention and the numbers we collected, I would say, definitely don't um, represent the community sufficiently. But we did collect um, quite some useful numbers and valuable numbers about the amount of machines being created, plastic collected and recycled, as well as jobs being created within the precious plastic community. So it was a good start and we hope that we can do some more of these impact surveys so we can see what impact we really have as a community. Yeah, and then Corona um, happily spread in pretty much every country in this world and protective um, equipment became a very um, rare thing and big issue. And people from the community started looking into ways how they can help with their precious plastic machines. And we saw that and made a call to the community to really share and collect all these solutions. And in a very short amount of time, we were able to create this folder, which, which contains files and tutorials for different um, pr protective equipment like face shields, masks and tools to avoid touching surfaces. Um, so all of these molds are now and files for molds are now um, publicly available and this enabled the, the workspaces all over the world to produce this equipment for their local healthcare system and really help saving lives basically. And this for us is an example which perfectly demonstrates the potential and, and impact a community can have if they share knowledge globally. 
so yeah, I'm very proud of that and very proud of the um, ability of the community and how to also to see how um, what, how much value precious plastic workspaces have as a small small scale recycling place um, locally. So back to the precious plastic core team, which as Dave mentioned, remained from version four besides or after the full chaos of having to empty Eindhoven workspace and uh, preparing containers for Portugal and uh, moving and setting up the workspace in France, we were also able to do some um, development and improvements of, for example, the machines, like we did a compact and disassemblable injection machine, as well as a bigger sheet press. We also made a new version of the plastic washing system and um, tested more the shredder and sheet press so we did thin sheets and uh, very thick sheets of all sorts of materials and um, we also made some training material and manuals yeah and there's way more stuff we want to do um, and improve and work on ideally much closer with the community and open source of course but also at the same time try to find a solution how to make this s economically sustainable um, but this is not really my topic, the whole money thing, so I'll leave that to Joseph um, and he will explain a little bit more about the structure behind this. Hello people, Joseph here talking to you from the very glamorous Precious Plastic office in France. Uh, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about the financial situation. So in 2020, one of our big goals was financial sustainability. And this is something that we talk and preach about a lot to our community but something that we never really have achieved uh, ourselves. So coming out of version four, uh, which was this you know, big year of research and development, we wanted to find a, a business model that kind of worked for us as an organization, uh, as well as the community, where we could continue to push all those uh, research and development into, uh, into the world. So that's really what we were trying to focus on. And one of the things that kept coming up was the fact that there were or other organizations around the world that wanted to partner with us uh, because of our te technical expertise in running precious plastic uh, projects. They, they had seen some of our pilots that we'd done around the world. And um, that's the thing we kind of focused on for developing this new model, was how do we help those other organizations? So when we moved out of our workspace in uh, June of this year, then we started to really reach out to these different partners that we had contacts with and try to sort out this uh, new model we were thinking of. But really the core of the business model um, is a lot of it stays the same as, as previously. So Precious Plastic is still providing the open source blueprints and the information for our community. Uh, but then actually the community plays a big role in building the, the knowledge base uh, through the discord and the how to's, people kind of talking about what's happening on the ground and feeding this big uh, database of knowledge that we have. Then we turn around and we sort of package this information and help, uh, uh, help employ it for other organizations who want to get started. Uh, and the other piece of that is that we use the community to provide the machines and molds uh, for these actual, uh, these, these projects. So it helps them in an economic way as well. And um, so we're actually right now, we're finishing up three projects, one in Nigeria, one in the US, uh, and one in Saudi Arabia which was really the first couple of projects where we could figure out how does this all work, you know, who does the shipping, how does the, how does the whole process look like. And I think we're, we're quite happy with what, um, what we, how these projects have gone, the different little research developments that we've built into the project as, as well. So keep a lookout for updates about these projects in the first half of uh, 2021. And we have some really exciting projects coming in uh, in the middle middle half of uh, 21, 2021 as well. But if you might ask the question, okay, how much um, money actually did you pull in through these projects? It was about 118,000 euros uh, with about 100,000 euros in expenses. So a little bit left over for investing in some new R&D. Um, and these numbers a little bit ballpark because we haven't done our uh, taxes yet for this year. Should be soon. Um, but I think overall, we're very happy with how things have gone so far. We think we are really narrowing down uh, to a model that works both for us and the community. Um, so I think we're, we're quite satisfied with that. And of course, we're learning about this every day. Uh, it's been a huge challenge and, and learning experience. 
but we're excited about um, moving into 21, uh, 2021, continuing to deepen the model that we've started. So I think that's it for now, and we'll see you next month. Bye-bye.